Hey, welcome back to the channel, my fellow weather junkies. I'm your host, Greg Majeski, your personal weatherman, bringing you the weather without all that social media hype here on your Friday, November 15th, 2024. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we're tracking here for today is we're going to be saying goodbye to Tropical Storm Sarah. Here, I think it looks like it's going to be pulling into the Yucatan and kind of fizzle out as it gets to the Gulf of Mexico. But that moisture may enhance some of the rainfall amounts across Florida. We'll talk about that in greater detail. Looking at the south central portion of the United States into Texas, maybe looking at some severe weather there as we go Sunday into Monday. We're looking at the day three outlook here from the Storm Prediction Center on that one. And then finally, what looks like the cold air is going to finally begin to shift off toward the east as we head towards say, the 21st of November. So we're going to finally get some colder temperatures in the east. Now, before we get into today's edition, I first want to thank the 23 new subscribers who came on board here yesterday. Thank you. Welcome on board. And if you haven't yet subscribed, if you're that 50% who watched and don't usually subscribe yet, go ahead, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so you're later on future content. And as always, if you appreciate this report, leave a comment down below. Give me some feedback and give me a thumbs up. I do appreciate you supporting this little channel. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our morning satellite imagery here as we're saying goodbye to one storm system here moving off the eastern seaboard here on your Friday morning. Pretty quiet here across the middle of the country, although we've got some foggy conditions I'm going to show you here in a second. And then here's our storm system. You get this little swirl upper level low energy because it's diving down here into the southwest. And as it pulls out as we go through the weekend, that's where we're going to be looking at Texas getting some active weather as we go in late in the day on your Sunday and into Monday. All right, so as I was mentioning, we got the fog here in the middle of the country from uh, basically Mississippi all the way up into Minnesota there. And we got some winter weather advisories for the higher elevations, obviously, here, California, Nevada, and Idaho. And this is some windy conditions here across portions of Arizona. Winter storm watches up across the, the Cascades up here into Washington State down to Oregon. In fact, they would be looking at it in feet of snow here for the next several days with some of the onshore flow going on there. All right, let's take a look at your surface map here again as we say goodbye to this little exiting storm system there. Pretty quiet here across the eastern third of the United States. Uh, seasonably cool, not really that bad across most of the nation right now. Colder temperatures have been staying predominantly out here in the west. There's a little bit of snow falling this morning there across portions of Nevada. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at some of the rains here on the east coast. Here's getting some rains down here. Kitty Hawk, Nags Head, uh, get, starting to exit with that low pressure system. A few thunderstorms even out to sea right there. But this is going to be moving on out and clearing on out. We should see an improving weather day here on the, the east coast there, the Carolina coast here for later this afternoon. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the latest from the Storms Prediction Center as far as what we're expecting over the next three days. The good news I can tell you is that today, not looking bad at all. In fact, we don't even have any organized thunderstorms at all here for today. So the day one outlook, all quiet, looking good. Let's look at the day two outlook here. Again, we're looking at uh, just a general thunderstorm threat up here coming across the Great Lakes, coming back toward Kansas here as we go throughout the day on your Saturday, late in the day on Saturday, way it's looking right now. And then as far as the day three outlook is concerned, this is the one that's got us concerned right now as we've got uh, right now a slight risk for severe weather here across the central portions of Texas, uh, a little bit of that marginal surrounding the outside of that. And I couldn't rule out a few isolated tornadoes with that as well. So we're going to see some heavy rains, obviously some thunderstorms, and the possibility of a few isolated tornadoes not out of the question as we go late in the day on, on your Sunday and into your Monday. So we'll be watching that very closely here through the weekend to see how that, that system that's going to be pulling out is going to materialize. So let's go ahead and take a look at the outlook here, the three to seven day hazards outlook. Again, we're going to be watching that south central part of the plains. With that, you're going to see some heavy rains out here as well, out here in the central portion of the country. Along the Gulf Coast here, as we watch some of that moisture come up from the what's left of Sarah, plus the cold front that's going to be sweeping that colder air over the next seven days in the eastern half, could see some heavy rains there as well. And then some heavy precipitation out here on the west coast as well from Washington State into Oregon. Again, I mentioned the Cascade Mountains, maybe looking at feet of snow, not out of the question with that system that's coming in out there as well. So looks like things are getting a little more active here across the United States. Let's go ahead and talk about the latest here on Tropical Storm Sarah here on our Tropical uh, feature here as this thing's hugging the coastline. That's been the saving grace because the center of circulation has been so close to the coastline, we didn't get a big hurricane out of this. And as it crosses into the Yucatan, it does appear that this thing's going to start to fizzle on out here as it's over land and it'll eventually come on back out and that moisture will steer up toward the north and toward the east eventually as the big trough's going to pick this thing up and whatever moisture it has will enhance that rain threat here uh, coming across portions of Florida 
as we go into the now early next week. So here's your current satellite imagery on this. I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit closer here. As you can see, the system has been raking the areas of Honduras, uh, especially now getting into Belize, where they've been de dealing with, uh, you know, inches, 20 to 30 inches of, of rain is what I've been reading on some of the reports uh, potentially with this. So some devastating flooding conditions there across portions of Central America uh, with this system. So as we go ahead and take a look at the what's expected here as far as the model intensity guidance, again, not expecting this to be a big problem. I think this, this stays down here in the lower end of the tropical storm realm here. I see a couple of them here trying to do that. I don't, I'm not buying that right there. Those are outliers. And again, you're going to see it across the Yucatan and then make that turn back out. And that moisture uh, will get caught up and bring in some enhanced rains into Florida as it does so uh, with that big trough coming in. That's the system that's going to be bringing the colder temperatures here across the, you know, the eastern portion of the United States. So let's talk about model guides. We're going to look at your short-term model guides first. So we're looking at the high-resolution model. going to go about 48 hours as we go ahead and say goodbye to our one system here on the east coast. This one goes going bye-bye. And, of course, we'll watch another system here coming here on the west coast as well. So this is a 48-hour high-resolution model here as we go ahead and take this on out. As we'll see the spin there, we see the spin there across the inner mountain region. That'll be bringing the snows there across portions of Idaho and into Nevada. We'll be watching the rest of that energy that's going to be coming in toward the southwest. So watch as I go and take this all the way through. Again, the, we the weather not looking too bad there on Saturday. Then that disturbance is coming into the high plains. Remember, we had that thunderstorm threat here coming in late in the day on Saturday, uh, showing a little bit of that coming up here into the Dakotas, maybe a rumble thunder with this. And then we'll watch this energy here that'll be ejecting out into Texas. Uh, that'll be bringing in the uh, rougher weather later day in the day on Saturday and Sunday. And here's another storm system out here on the, the west coast here coming in on your Saturday night in, uh, going into Saturday night. That's uh, 2Z, so that's about uh, 9 o'clock at night there, Eastern time. So as we're going to take this all the way out to the end of its run, 48-hour run here, as it, again, uh, that's what we'll be seeing here going throughout the day on Saturday, going toward midnight on your Sunday, as we'll be seeing a, a few storms uh, here across portions of Wisconsin. Here, a little bit of rain up here as well. And then we'll watch this very closely as this begins to eject on out, and we'll see the active weather increase there across Texas as we go Sunday into your Monday. So let's talk about the jet stream. Let's talk about what's driving this and what's why we're going to be seeing that severe active weather here as we head into uh, this upcoming uh, uh, Sunday and Monday. So you got this energy that's coming on out here. You see the big dip of the jet stream. This is going into late in the day on your Saturday. And you see it kind of kicking on out here. So this is the piece of energy right down here as this thing ejects out of, of New Mexico. We'll be looking at for that target zone right through there to see the potential thunderstorms. And it's also this big trough, by the way, that's going to be picking up our our, our tropical system was left of it anyway, and kind of shutting it off. So that big trough is going to come on in and it's going to shut that moisture uh, going into next week here into across Florida. And then you see this a pretty pronounced jet stream here uh, coming on through. So I, not only do I think we're going to have severe weather going on to Sunday, there might be a little bit of a chance there on Monday as well across parts of, of Texas as well, just a little bit further to the east. So as this thing goes on by, we'll see this low shift. And as we go into the 21st, this is when the colder air will move in here across the eastern third of the United States. So, so And with that, even possibly, possibly even a little snow getting into portions of Ohio uh, as well. I just remember last year, Ohio being a bit of a snow drought, and they may actually get some snow out of this first system. So a uh, very pronounced jet stream here late in the day on your Thursday. So this is on the 21st uh, late in the day. You got this very dip, big, strong dip in the jet stream. You got the cold air kind of coming in here. Uh, that's going to be keeping it on the chilly side. And uh, temperature will, will modify a little bit out of here across the southwest with a little bit of ridging there in the west. So let's go ahead and take this out. We're going to go out to, we're going to, go out to 240 uh, hours on this one. Again, we'll see things begin to modify a little bit going through the weekend. And then we'll watch our next storm system here uh, going into early next week. We'll take this out to Thanksgiving Day, actually. So we'll see how this thing looks as, as we go in toward Thanksgiving. Looks like we're, uh, no real pronounced storm system here. You've got a, kind of a backing going and a sinking of uh, uh, jet stream that's kind of bending backwards. So no major storm systems. There may be some minor ones kind of embedded in there, uh, but that's about it. So not looking too bad there on Thanksgiving Day. Let's look at the precipitation now. Let's go ahead and break this forward here as we take it through the weekend. Again, we've already looked at it right through uh, Sunday night. So that's lining up pretty well with what the Europeans showing there. Uh, again, as we're looking at uh, a few showers here, watching this upper low feature back across the southwest. It's going to be kicking on out as we go into your Sunday and Monday. So here we go. Uh, going throughout the day on Sunday, here comes the storms. Again, this will be Sunday night, Monday morning event as this thing starts to develop. So this is where the severe weather will start to kick out here as we go Sunday night into Monday morning. Still looking at the rains out here on the West Coast. Pretty quiet up and down the eastern seaboard, though. Not looking too bad as we're going into your Monday morning, uh, going into the 19th. 
So as I drag this thing out again, as we go for sure in time, against some pretty good heavy rains there across Monday there, across portions of uh, Oklahoma and into Kansas. Again, we'll be watching this area down here, uh, potentially some severe weather continuing later in the day on Monday into that zone, uh, going into Monday as that low begins to kick on up. And as we go ahead and take this forward again, this will switch ball toward the east. And as this thing begins to sweep to the east, that's going to bring in the cold air. So we're going to be seeing some of this moisture down here. See this moisture uh, come in from the south. So we got some moisture here from Sarah down here, uh, kind of hooking up with this frontal system as it kind of merges in. You'll see the two kind of coming together. I back that up there. You see it. Whoop, there it kind of comes together, merging in across the Louisiana coast, along the Carolina coast. It'll enhance that rain there. Uh, coming in across Florida. So we'll get a little bit of tropical enhancement with the rains there across Alabama, Georgia, and parts of Florida as this thing gets moved on up here. Then we'll see this thing settle, move, push off toward the east with another system uh, kicking in behind it. Here's our another one. This one is going to jump some snow with this one as this has got a little bit of colder air with this uh, next feature coming on out. And this is that upper level low pinch off that's going to be sitting there. And this, this feature here going into Friday and Saturday it might dump a little snow in with this. Uh, I don't think it'll be too big a deal, but we'll, it's a, it'll be uh, relatively uh, mild at the ground temperature level, obviously. So this may bring some snows with this big upper level low going into Saturday and Sunday, going into the 23rd and into the 24th, going into next weekend. And then we'll see another storm system, obviously, coming out here on the West Coast here, uh, going into your uh, Sunday and Monday into California and Oregon with that next system. And of course, we've got the big upper level low here, just kind of kind of meandering here. Uh, take a little bit to kick on out as we go into uh, Monday of next week. And then we'll take a stake ahead. We'll look ahead toward Thanksgiving week. Right now, Tuesday's looking not too bad travel day. And then Wednesday, of course, a busy travel day here uh, going into Wednesday morning. So I'm only I'm taking out this far because we're getting closer to Thanksgiving. And I'm going to keep doing this uh, to kind of see how the models change from run to run. But keep in mind, the further you go out, the, the more errors you're going to get. But we're kind of looking at trends. We're seeing how things are trending right now. Day before, looking at some rain across the southeast. You got some cold air out here in the west, uh, but doesn't look too bad. I don't see any big major storm systems out here, which is what I'm looking for as we go throughout the day on Wednesday and then going into Thanksgiving Day. Uh, again, we're looking at some wet weather here across the areas of the, the Midwest, maybe some snow there, some rains across the south. Looking quiet out here in the west, so that's going into Thanksgiving Day. So we're going to continue to monitor this day by day to see how the forecast evolves as we get closer to it. It will change. But again, we're just kind of looking at forecast trends and how things are looking going out to Thanksgiving Day. Uh, here's the rainfall amounts going out 10 days here. I'll only keep this to a 10-day. Look at how these rainfall totals out here on the West Coast. I mean, very, very high indeed. Uh, again, we'll get some of that enhanced rains here across the southeast. And obviously, that upper level low will bring us that uh, the rain there across the areas of the Howard River Valley. And of course, this is where the thunderstorms and the rain will be sweeping up here uh, with the rains coming in here over into Sunday and Monday across the middle of the country uh, with some pretty pretty decent rains there. Let's go ahead and talk about the regions. I want to talk about the West Coast here. Let's go out and talk about the West Coast. And uh, boy, you're talking about some very, very heavy rainfall here. I'm seeing a pocket air 8 to 12 inches on the Oregon uh, coastline and into Northern California. So some very heavy rains there. And of course, you go up in the elevation, you're going to be talking absolutely feet of snow uh, with that system. So let's go ahead and talk about the snow here as we go ahead and take a look at this. Well, again, going for the next 10 days. I don't want to go beyond 10 days when it comes to snow totals here. So uh, getting, the, getting the mountain snows, that'll continue here uh, going into next week, obviously. And then as we go to the 21st, look at this little pocket here. Look, I got a little pocket of snows here across Ohio, Indiana, portions of, of uh, uh, West Virginia as well, uh, going in toward the 21st and 22nd. So I've got to watch that pretty close. Let's see if that actually comes to fruition or not. So going out 10 days again, you got some pretty good mountain snows. You're talking about feet of snow out here in the west, and we got a little pocket of snow here. We got to watch there with that upper level low as we go into, uh, say, going into the 21st and into the 22nd. So let's go to the Ohio River Valley. Let's go. Let's talk about uh, what we're expecting as far as snow totals here. Let's just check that out. Again, we're still 10 days out, but at least we can kind of kind of watch and see if this changes from run to run and day to day. And right now, hey, you've seen like a little pocket there of like five, maybe up to 10 inches of snow there in southern Ohio. And it looks like a little bit of higher snows here in the Appalachian Mountains as well. So again, something to watch and see how it, it if it comes to fruition or not, we still got a few days to watch this and see if it uh, will will actually do that or not. All right. So looking at the temperature profile here again, the trend is for it to be cold, colder across the country. I personally don't really care for a warm Thanksgiving, and I think the trend is for a lot of the country is going to see that see below normal. So let's go ahead and look at this here. Again, the blue and the green, that's where you're looking at temperature anomalies below normal out here in the West. We've seen that for days on end. 
Uh, temperatures running above average, so seasonally be milder than what they're supposed to be here in the middle of the country as we go through this upcoming weekend. So let's go ahead and watch that. Again, watch that timestamp in the upper right-hand corner here as I go ahead and take you out here uh, through the weekend. So we're going through the weekend. Saturday, not looking bad. We got that clash of air masses as that low comes out going into Sunday. So because of that, we'll be watching, the, again, the clash with the thunderstorms down here as that upper level low starts to kick on out across the southwest into the southern plains. And you see it starts to push off toward the east there a little bit as it uh, begins to slowly push off. So we got two systems. We got an initial push going to the east, and then as we get toward the 20th, 21st, then we start pushing this off. There we go. Look, it's a big change there as we go throughout the day on the 21st as we start to get uh, frontal that's going to start pushing uh, this direction. A little weird to see this. We're not getting a real a pull coming out of Canada. It's just kind of pushing that cold air. It's been kind of bottlenecked out in the west and just kind of pushing it off toward the east here. Uh, a little bit as we go throughout the 21st. So that's the upper level low. Southeast starts to cool off, obviously, and across the Ohio River Valley starts to cool off going in there. Again, relatively cool, not overly cold. We're not talking about Arctic outbreak here. So this will continue into the 20, end of the 22nd. So let's take this on out toward, toward uh, the week of uh, Thanksgiving. I always want to say Christmas for some dumb reason, but uh, I was doing that yesterday. But so you've seen the colder temperatures out here in the Northwest. Uh, relatively mild, uh, unseasonably mild, above normal temperatures here in the middle of the country going toward Monday the 25th. And as we take this out toward Thanksgiving, we got another push here, some cool air here it comes, uh, going in toward Wednesday. Here's your travel day here on Wednesday. Notice how the temperatures have dropped off for a big part of the country here uh, going into your Wednesday on your travel day there. And then finally taking this into Thanksgiving morning uh, and throughout the, out the day here. Uh, again, you're seeing uh, most of the country here throughout the day on, thir on Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, seeing uh, temperatures running below average. Again, that's what we're seeing for now. It's still 336 hours away. We're going to track this daily just to see how the models adjust and see if the pattern changes much. We're looking for if there's a consistency there on the long range. So that's why I'm showing you there uh, for right now. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the, the Climate Center and see what they're showing here as far as the 6 to 10 day outlook is concerned. Again, reflecting that colder temperatures we just looked at here going November 20th through the 24th as this pushes on. We're going to be warm. You notice we still had some red there across uh, New England. Uh, so we're still looking at temperatures running above average for this time of year for the Northeast, probably by some five to seven degrees there. But uh, most of the country gets a nice cool down here and then it really settles into the Southeast going out toward Thanksgiving Day. So for my part of the country, and I hate warm warm Thanksgivings, it looks like we're going to be seeing some below normal temperatures here across the southeast. A bit of a reprieve out here in the west. They've been running, again, uh, below average for most of the fall that gets uh, above normal temperatures going in here toward the end of the month. Precipitation-wise, uh, we're seeing active weather here along the eastern seaboard, the Midwest, but drier conditions here across the west and the south portions of the south central portion of the United States with some dry weather there. And uh, that'll continue for a bigger swath. So going in toward uh, Thanksgiving week, remember what I was showing you, it didn't look like there was any big major organized storm systems there, which is great news for travelers going out, heading out toward Wednesday. Of course, this is subject to change. But for right now, the trend for Thanksgiving week going in toward Thanksgiving is that the travel shouldn't be too big of a problem. Because a few days ago, it looked like it was going to be. Now it's not going, not showing it. It will, as we get closer to it, we'll be able to fine tune that forecast and keep you apprised of any major changes there uh, that can impact your travel headaches or any travel problems uh, for that week. All right, that is your update for now. Again, I want to thank, it was a bit of a surprise. We had a, a lot of new subscribers that jumped on yesterday. We typically only average maybe six or eight new subscribers a day. Yesterday was 23. That was very nice. So again, I want to thank all the new subscribers here to the channel. And if you haven't yet subscribed, I like to give you my personal invitation uh, to be your personal weatherman. I don't try to hype every storm to death. I don't really uh, like doing that. I just like to give it to you straightforward here on this channel. So if you'd like to be part of the product, be part of the Weather Nerds universe, please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you learn about future content. And as always, I'd like to invite you to leave a comment down below if you got something you'd like to see in this product because this is your product. Uh, please post that down below and I do appreciate your feedback. All right, that's it for now. You guys take it easy, be good, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Enjoy your weekend.